to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Grasshopper Songs and Owl Desserts, an adaptation of a classic fable written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! Grasshopper Songs and Owl Desserts Once upon a time, in a sunny little piece of forest, Miss Owl was sleeping soundly. Her house was a towering oak tree, and her bedroom was a cozy little hollow in the trunk. She had been up all night hunting the mice and bugs she loved, and her wings were tired. Her talons were tired, too, and so were her big golden eyes. Those eyes were closed now, and she was snoring with a tidy little hoo hoo sound. Hers was a deep sleep, deeper than deep. She was enjoying the kind of sleep you only get from a day's, or in Miss Owl's case, night's, hard work. It was the kind of sleep where your body feels like smooth butter melting onto a warm, pillowy roll. It was the kind of sleep that brought only sweet dreams and left you wanting more, more, more. To be a little more concise, it was the perfect kind of sleep. At least, for a while. Unfortunately, it was rudely interrupted by a sudden, shouted song. Well, I'm a grasshopper, I'm the showstopper, hear my legs sing all night and day. And if you're near, the chances you'll hear a song from a master, masterfully played, masterfully played. Miss Owl jerked awake so suddenly that she banged her feathered head on the roof of her cozy hollow. Her squawk of pain echoed out of the tree, and her head followed a second later, peering this way and that. She wasn't used to the sun, so it made her blink and squint. It was too bright for her sensitive eyes. At night, she could spot a moth with nothing but a fingernail of moonlight to guide her. During the day, though, she was nearly blind. What's all this terrible racket? she called out. Since she couldn't see, she yelled instead. Who's out there playing this time of day? From somewhere far below, that same singing voice came ringing back. I see an owl, but you're blind as a bat. I'm a grasshopper, and it's my right and my nature to sing. Well, I never... I don't mind if you sing, but please don't do it outside of my bedroom. I'm trying to get some sleep. Well, we've established you have bad eyes, but I'm starting to think you have bad ears as well. You should be so lucky to hear my song for free. Do you even know who I am? Some annoying grasshopper, Miss Owl grumbled. I'm Edward G. Hopper. I'm sure I don't. The greenish gloat with the golden throat. I really don't. The smug-heeled dawn of the real bug song. Please just stop. The insect you respect. Please, would you? The man of choice with the golden voice. Enough! Miss Owl found herself shouting. Please, enough! I just want to go back to sleep. Well, that was pretty rude of you. Just for that, I think I'll sing another verse. Trust me, once you hear a little more, you'll be all about the Edward sound. Miss Owl shouted again, but it was no use. Somewhere far below, Edward G. Hopper launched back into song. Well, I'm a grasshopper, you're just a popper. It's luck you get to hear me for free. And if you listen, you'll soon be wishing that you had a voice as lovely as me. Lovely as me. When at last it was over, Miss Owl pulled back into her tree hollow and hunkered down. That grasshopper would never let her sleep. If it was night, she would flap down there and eat him up. The forest knew she'd eaten enough crickets in her day. How different was a grasshopper, really? The sunlight, though, it was just too bright for her eyes. 
The same amazing ability that let her see by just a sip of starlight also made the sun sting her eyes, even if she kept them mostly closed. What? No applause? called the grasshopper from somewhere in the forest scrub below. I guess you don't appreciate art. Miss Owl wanted to argue again, but she knew it was no good. The grasshopper wanted to be a pain, and the more she fought, the longer he'd stay. If she kept at it, he would probably be there all day. No, she decided. It was better just to mind her own business and try to sleep. Well, I'm a grasshopper, and it's just proper that I should be blessed with a marvelous tone. And you can try ignoring, pretending that you're snoring. I'll just sing louder, and you'll hear it at home. Hear it at home. Miss Owl sighed, but didn't get angry. If she ignored him, he would go away. It would work. It had to work. And it seemed to work, at least for a little. The sunny woods grew quiet again. The only song was the gentle buzz, hum, chirp of the forest. Before long, Miss Owl let herself relax again, and soon she was drifting back into that beautiful sleep. She was warm, she was cozy, she was a dandelion puff floating weightless on a summer breeze. She was honey, rolling slow and syrupy down the comb. She was, in short, perfectly at peace. Well, I'm a grasshopper, a wild bee bopper, and I feel the music deep in my heart. And when my cheers slip into your ears, you'll move your feet and dance to my heart. Dance to my heart. Enough is enough, Miss Owl thought. She had tried being nice. She had tried turning the other wing, but it wasn't working. It was time for a new plan. Luckily for her, Miss Owl, like all owls, was very wise. It wasn't long at all before she had the perfect idea. I hate to say it, Edward, but I was wrong, she called out. Your voice is better than a lullaby. Ha, he called back. I knew you'd appreciate it eventually. Everyone loves Edward G. Hopper. It's true, she agreed. You're truly the greenish gloat with the golden throat. Hey, that's right. You're the smug heel dawn of the real bug song. Ah, oh, keep talking. You're the insect I respect. Hit me with one more, baby. You're the man of choice with the golden voice. Oh, we've got a new fan in the forest, he said. I knew you'd come around. I have, she agreed. In fact, I'd take it as a favor if you came up here into my home and sang for me, just so I can hear you right up close. Of course, Edward called back. Anything for a fan. One mighty leap at a time, the grasshopper climbed Miss Owl's mighty oak. His final leap carried him through the hole and into her cozy little hollow. Here I am, said Edward. Now, where should I perform? Miss Owl smiled. She hadn't been able to see him outside in the bright, bright sun, but in the shadows of her tree hollow... I have just the stage for you, she said. Then, with a quick, predatory lunge, she swallowed the grasshopper whole in one mighty gulp. Well, she said, licking her beak, that takes care of that. She leaned back in her hollow, that sweet sleep already starting to wash over her. She began to drift off, enjoying her hard-earned silence at last. Then, from somewhere deep in her belly, Well! The End Thanks for listening!